Hello, I am Wallace, the Polish toy guy. Today I'm going to review the fifth toy by Fans Hobby from the Master Builder series. This is the final generation 1 monster bot inspired toy that tells us what would happen if someone would try to make a masterpiece styled Autobot grotesque. This is FlyPro and this review is going to be slightly different than Feilong and Negatuf because with this toy we also get a crowning piece for all three of the Monster Squad as now they are officially called the Monster Squad accessory pack that provides new parts for the previously released toys. So this is going to be interesting and let's see what FlyPro can offer. And as always, big thanks to Fans Hobby for providing me this toy for this review as a sample. This time I want to move the box and manual inspection to a later part of the review and already start talking about FlyPro the toy, which just like its source material looks like a combination of a dragon and a walrus to me. And I have to say, while Double Cross is my favorite monster bot, I do have some fondness for Grotesque, because I actually had him in hands as a kid, when I was around 7 years old and my classmate brought his copy to school so that we could play with our Transformers together, and I remember that this toy impressed my young mind a lot. He was bright and colorful, part beast and part robot, transforming and overall simply cool. So as a result, I was always curious how designers would handle Grotesque in the future, and I think fans' hobby attempt to portray him is very nice. Though before I go to the good stuff, I want to address the less good stuff and be done with it. While Grotesque and Double Cross were two entirely different designs, FlyPro borrows the vast majority of his bottom half from Fei Long. I'm not sure why this happens, seeing how their source materials have completely different legs and tails, so part of me is bothered by that and considers this a design shortcut, where Grotesque's solutions probably could have been translated to a more poseable toy. Now, the interesting phenomenon is that this bothers me a lot less now that I have FlyPro in front of me than it did when I just looked at his early pictures. I think the reason for this is that a. some details and parts like the tail were redesigned and b. the toy as a whole is very nice to look at and pose, so this similarity is easily shrugged off as something not all that relevant and I think I consciously noticed this more in this mode, whereas in robot mode I I hardly pay attention to it whatsoever. Also, I then remember that remolding and reusing parts is something that happens in official Transformers a lot, so maybe I should be more forgiving if I see it somewhere else occasionally. Ok, with that matter mentioned, let's go to the promised good stuff. And like with all of the Monster Squad, the size and heft is a major plus. Again, we have a toy of leader-like size and satisfying arm-tiring weight, and it gets even bigger visually if we fully expand the wings, which I do recommend if you have the space. And like I said, if you've seen Fei Long even once, you will instantly recognize the lower part of this toy, but again, Many changes were made to this and the tail is probably the most prominent one. This is a completely different, more spiky tail with different accents and paint apps. It looks quite nice actually. As does this part. Yes, it's the same but also different thanks to the color scheme, so I suppose I can forgive that. And overall the color scheme of this toy is great. Magenta, grey, blue, white. This worked with Generation 1 Grotesque and it certainly works with this guy. It's just really nice to look at. And the nice thing is also this walrus dragon hybrid thing, which has die cast teeth and opening mouth. With a bit of effort. And we have a slot for a flame effect part that I will cover later on. And we have these nice metallic blue eyes. Very nice paint applications all over the throat and the sides. Well, not too many details overall, but the proportion of detail and shape is good enough for me to like this for what it is. And I do like these claw arms. Yes, we can clearly tell that these will become robot arms, not many changes going on. 
aside from these claws, but these are articulated. As you can see, each one has its own ball joint. And we do have some nice details on the forearms and on the arm guards. And on the bottom we also have some nice details. Again, we recognize Fei Long touches, but this is new. So that's good. Very spiky. And because this is borrowed from Fei Long, you can also use this to slot in his weapons. Though, we shall see in a moment if that works with Fly Pro's own weapon. But this is new, this is new, and this is old, but this is definitely new, and I think the wings are my favorite part of this mode. Like I said, they not only increase the size of this toy visually exponentially, but what's even better, they are super articulated compared to Fei Long, who had them on a hinge, but this one has double hinges in multiple axes, so you can lift these up, bend them back, bend them forward, so these wings are far more expressive while still retaining this double hinge if you want to compress them, but I like to keep them like this. I also like the changes. We have these froster-like bits over here, which not only look fresh, but also help me to align these wings properly. When these are aligned, in a line, I know that they are pointing perfectly backwards, so I like this visual cue a lot. And we have this gap that is used to store this inside in robot mode, but like I said, this can also be used to store the weapon, and I'm going to introduce it in a second. And to be very honest, I'm surprised how much I like this gun. It's a really great design with some minor, subtle paint apps, and really great shapes. To me, this looks like a pair of rockets that were stuck together with a binding piece in the back, and I really like this design. It just looks powerful. It looks fun. And we have a handle, which has again this railing that is used primarily by the robot mode fists, but not only, and as you will see in a second, this helps secure the gun in beast mode. So the trick is, we have several screw holes visible in here, but only one of them will accept the gun, and that's the one that's not actually a screw hole, just a hole for this very handle. And we can tell because it has an extra cutout in the back to store the rail. So we attach it, at least try, like that, and now FlyPro has over-the-head cannons, which actually look kind of good here. And also, don't worry if your toy is hunching a bit with its front. In theory, these flaps are supposed to peg in on this panel to keep the main body of this toy in a single line, but it's not strong enough to support the weight of the front, so it will topple a bit but that's not a problem, I think that still maintains the overall natural presence of this toy. But I digress. The main reason I wanted to show you this part of the toy again from this angle is because I wanted to show you how the guns of Fei Long look when they are plugged in over here. And they do indeed fit without any problems. Just like that, slot them like you did on Fei Long. And now the cool part of this is not only do they fit, but also they work with FlyPro's main gun quite well. In fact, if we look closer at the sides of the gun, we can see that the corners are cut diagonally, and I think this was done on purpose exactly to fit the barrels of Fei Long's gun. Now, regarding the posability, I'm not going to talk too much about it in this mode, because most of what you see is designed for robot mode, and it just has some practical use in beast mode. However, yes, I can't deny that in this mode, FlyPro does have some expressiveness. Not maybe all that much, but yes, you can find some minor use for all of these joints, like the ball joint in the head. That's pretty much the best thing that works when you try to stare down. Not all that much up because of these pieces and not all that much to the sides because of these edges clashing. 
The arms are very poseable for a beast mode. This is uh, as much poseable as it was on Fei Long, since this is the exact same construction. I do think using the robot's waist joint can be of use, but overall, yes, it takes some imagination to make this look really, really great. I think this is best working when you have other toys so you can make some scene like FlyPro attacking other robots then this could work but on its own I think the posability that is made for this toy works the best in robot mode and then I will give you a full tour of all things that this toy can do in terms of movement and for this review I have decided to move the beast mode comparisons together with the robot mode comparisons at the later stage of the review and now I'm going to go for the transformation to robot mode but first I want to show you what we have to read through to understand the transformation when we see the toy for the first time. That is the manual which I have to say just looking at the cover looks stunning. This is great. I mean this style that was also used for Gunfighter 2 is really working for FlyPro. I think I even like FlyPro's art much better than this. Here it looks okay, we can see the toy, but here this looks dynamic and even ferocious. Just look at the contrast. Menacing robot, very, very angry monster thing. This looks wonderful. But aside from decorative purposes, the manual is pretty clean to read. Everything is shown, so we know what steps we have to take. No problems with that. It's not a very hard transformation in the first place, so everything is understandable. And the last two pages are dedicated to the Monster Squad expansion pack. So this is the part of the toy that we are going to talk after the main robot mode overview, which will happen after this clip. And by this clip, I mean the clip that shows how to transform FlyPro hands-on. And I will start with the legs, and I will tell you already, this part of the transformation is much, much simpler than it was on FlyPro, despite being the same process, mechanically speaking. Mostly because we have many more ways to manage what's above the legs in a way that makes it unobstructive. And that was really a pain on Fei Long, I will tell you. So I will start by preparing the toy through collapsing the wings and bending them forward as much away from the legs as possible. And I will also use the joints in the arms to get them out of the way. And now I can lift up these covers, which pretty much did that job on their own. And first we split the legs and we can bend the tail a bit out of the way, not the full, all the way around, but now we can start with one leg, we can bend it out a bit, one click at the time, and we flip up this panel from here, and now we bend it out like this, and now we start to bend the outer leg out as much as possible while also bring it closer to a full split so that these this part passes this part and the crotch piece and like i said it's so much easier to do with none of robot bits kibble from other parts of the alt mode sticking out here so i'm doing it like so Click the click, I like that sound a lot. Great, and now we can go to the beast leg and it is mounted on this double hinge that will make this part swivel around to inside of the leg. So let's start by unclipping it, like so. And now we can ratchet it down so that this piece lands over here and while we're at it, we can also prep the rest of the leg by putting the claws and the knee in one line for now. Now we put this toe spike so that it becomes a side of the front of the foot. And now we can 
Oh wait, we'll do that later on when this is in position. So now we use this part of the hinge to bring everything closer and it will lock with a click. And now we can adjust this. And we can also open this up a bit to give us even more room. Now we can close off these panels like that and with them flush we can bring the claw so that it becomes a cover for a cover. And we tuck the tail to the side and with that done the leg is complete. So I'm going to jump and do the other one and then we'll go to the torso. So now we have something like this, which I suppose also does look intriguing in a way. But what we really want to do is to first flip this around and lift this pink section above or magenta like this. And I really have to watch out not to say like this and like so too many times because people do notice. And now we will transform one of the arms. So let's pull it down to the normal position and before we tuck it all the way down we can transform the forearm which I think is pretty neat. So these claws are on a separate piece from the forearm so we untab it from here and this part I really like. At first glance you would think that just rotating them down would be all thing but no this is actually a slider rail, so if we give it a push, this will go back to form sort of lower elbow guards and it will actually click into place. So we push it down, it clicks into place, it may be a fairly mute click, but nevertheless it occurs and we can do whatever we want with that. And now we open up the forearm. And as you can see, the hand is attached to this piece on this top panel. So what we want to do is to rotate it out and do note that the fingers may get stuck on this piece of plastic as it is hollow. So it will create situations where it can get stuck. So you have to manage your fingers. Or just try rotating it the other way around. Okay, obstacle conquered. And now before we connect these bits again, we rotate it one more time. And now the forearm is complete. And now for the finishing touch, we reveal the head. And that's very simple. We just have a single hinge at the bottom of the neck. So now we just unclip it from the front collar. And as we lift this and spin it back, we reveal the head. And this would not be as interesting if it wasn't for the fact that we have sort of a automatic flap that covers this gap inside the head that is still visible on the back of the robot mode. So when we rotate it back, it looks like nothing is happening. But as you push this back, the piece that is inside will meet resistance from the hinge that's molded just for this purpose. And as you can see, once the resistance is met, it will keep this inner flap in position, creating a filler piece, which looks really great. And when we transform it back, it just touches the head, which becomes another piece of resistance. And now it's locked again into main position and we can just manage the head however we want. It may look like these pieces could go further inside, but I think when you meet the initial resistance, don't try to push it in any further, just to be on the safe side. And with that done, FlyPro's robot mode is now complete. And to be very honest, FlyPro's main mode caught me by surprise. At first, in terms of self-interest, I wasn't thinking too much of it with all that semi long reuse, give me power baser already attitude, but once I've seen the final product with my own eyes, I can't deny that this robot mode looks great. 
It's not topping over Feilung visually, but it definitely can't be considered its equal due to having its own unique flavor. Simply put, the overall presence of FlyPro is excellent, and I can't deny one of the key factors are the wings that add a lot of presence to this toy the same way they helped the Double Dragon. But even if I amputate them, the rest of FlyPro still looks very nice. I really like the shapes of the upper body. It's by far the simplest to transform of the three monster squad bots, but it still retains a feel of bulky power and a robot humanoid tank that will smash any obstacle with a punch and I like this vibe. It also helps that the combination of sculpted details and paint and markings applied over them results in a very eye-catching mechanical frame. It's no overkill, but it just strikes a good balance. On that topic, I like how the newly revealed areas of white fit together with the magenta, and how most of the grey is now on the back. And I admit, the set back is also rather big once you go looking there, and may seem like FlyPro is carrying around a chopped off walrus head, but the wings obscure it from sight most of the time. Not to mention it's both in line with the source material and light enough not to create any real problems while handling the toy. We can also take a closer look at the head, which I do find a-okay. Nothing spectacular, but also nothing bad. Solid grey face, painted metallic eyes, simple but clean helmet design, a-okay indeed. If I could have changed anything, I'd remove the vertical cheek lines on the face. Fly Pro is already looking older than Megatooth and Phalong with this facial design, and these lines just emphasize that. And just to talk about the legs for a second, like I said, they don't bother me at all in this mode, and they blend with the newly designed upper bit of this robot quite well, even if you put FlyPro next to the first user of these parts. Okay, one small nitpick. The tail is a brand new piece, but it's definitely just a bit too long, and its tip might scratch on your surface once you leave the A stance, if, just like me, you prefer to push the feet as far to the front as possible. Now we can go to posability, which I really like on this toy, even though it may look very similar to what Feilong had to offer. So let's start from the top, we have a ball jointed head that can move slightly up and down, tilt a bit and move all the way around. Then we have the arms, which I really, really like. Starting from the chest area, they have this small butterfly joint to move forwards and backwards, and they have this joint to move like that in the shoulder. But if you don't want to move the arm guards, you can also use this secondary joint inside the guard. So if you combine both of these, you can get a really, really big amount of movement. But I prefer to keep these in a way where this line aligns with this line and mostly use this joint. Of course, the arms move 360 and if you take away the arms, or my, the, the wings, nothing stops them. And while we're at this topic, again, wings can fold back to compress themselves for display. They can move around to become a sort of a shield, and my favorite part, they move up and down just like in monster mode. I really didn't realize I like this kind of motion on the wings until I actually got my hands on a toy that has this option. Really great. Now we have rotation in the bicep, or above the elbow, and the set elbow ratchets to around some 90 plus degrees and then we have moving wrists and we have opening hands with a separate trigger finger that has one further joint in the, after the first joint and we can also move this if we want i'm going to discuss the options of that in a moment when we go to weapons and then we have the waist that also moves around without any problems. That is, until the wings start to hit the camera when you get too eager about that. Now, this is an improvement over Fei Long. We had these front armor skirts also, but now they are on separate bars. While in Fei Long, they moved in tandem, and it kind of annoyed me a bit, but here, separate 
movement for each leg. That's wonderful. Now we have the hips, which can kick forward about that much and kick backward a lot more, actually. And we have thigh swivel. And of course, we can get a full split. That almost sounds like a woodpecker to me. And we also have the knees, which move about this much. You can increase this amount of movement if you undo the flap, but I think I'm going to leave them as they are. And then we have the feet, which are on the ball joints, so they can tilt to the sides, up and down. And using the transformation joint, we can also change the range of motion, so we can make FlyPro slightly taller, and that also allows us to tilt up the toes, so this can become a big leverage when posing this toy. And we also can add extra stability to the toy by putting the claws in, in a single line with the feet. And we have these moving flaps as well. And you can also do this with the hand, and for some reason I really like the effect of just bending this inward a bit. So the posability as a whole is really great for a toy of this size and bulk. And now let's talk about arming FlyPro up in this mode. And for me there are main two solutions. One, use the monster mode claws, put them back into their alt mode position and slash away. This actually makes a convincing weapon, perhaps something ninja style, but I just like the idea of using this as a little scratchy scratchy on FlyPro's enemies. And we can also change the scratch pattern by just getting the finger that we don't want out of the way. And that really looks threatening in my opinion. Now the other option we have is using the gun again. And like all previous fans hobby toys, we have this rail system that's inside the palm. And here we can see the slider on the handle. So what we do is, like always, align everything and slide the gun down and after we do that we have a really nice looking weapon. Again, Fans Hobby has not yet fixed the trigger finger issue that I have. That means the trigger finger is again depressed inside the palm more than the rest of the fingers, so it kind of doesn't look like there's any trigger to push inside. And you can imagine by my tone that I'm not a big fan of this thing. I mean, it's not a biggie, I suppose, and from afar you don't even see it all that much, but when you go closer, you can see that there's something off with this. And I know it's mostly aesthetic, but still, it kind of annoys me, especially that this is Fans Hobby's fifth toy, so technically they did have time to look this over and fix this up a bit. But it sort of balances out with how cool the gun looks in the hand. And now it's time to start robot mode comparisons. So we will start, of course, with the entire monster squad, which really looks great together. These toys are blocky, but really well sculpted. And while they seem simple, they also carry a lot of dynamic, brutal power to them. And I think they really, really are great exposition pieces. Though, yes, I know that once you put FlyPro and Phalong next to each other, you do start to notice the similarities. But thankfully, even with this knowledge, I can still acknowledge that both of them do deserve being treated as separate entities. And here is FlyPro next to Fans Hobby Gunfighter 2 and Masterpiece 10 Optimus Prime, the Japanese version. And for some further masterpiece toys, here we have the Toys R Us Grimlock and Takara Tomy's Hot Rodimus. And of course, my reviews can't go without the following elements of comparison. The common cola can, the one dollar bill and one euro coin. Alright, I think that takes care of Flypro the toy 
on its own. So now we can move on to the other thing that was in the box, the Monster Squad Expansion Pack, which as you can see is a set of cards and plastic parts in baggies that enrich both the toys and their surroundings. And I like that this is a direct result of fans hobby actually reacting to suggestions made by fans after each release. As it turns out, mine included. So let's dissect this set and see how it improves our toys. So let's start with the surroundings, specifically with the outer surroundings, that is the boxes. As you can see, it is very visible that Fei Long and Megatooth were released before the style change that came with Gunfighter 2. And the first expansion pack piece is a set of two new box covers that you can glue on top of the old one to make this the same style as Fly Pro. So now all three boxes look like they were made from the same mold and I have to say they look great with this style. The background, the poses, the presentation of both modes, this is really really neat to look at and it seems that Fans Hobby is actually encouraging us to display our boxes by combining all three box arts into a single image. Look at that. We have this arc going on left, center, rise, the same with the alt modes, and if you look closely you will see that Fei Long's wings go to Megatooth's box and Megatooth's claws go to both Fei Long's and Fly Pro's and also Fly Pro's wing is over here. So this looks almost like a cut and paste combine poster and I really like this. And as you can see, the second thing we get for the surroundings of our toys is a set of three collector cards that also combine their artworks to look really cool just on a smaller scale. And I suppose we also get the pictures of the alt modes and some stats on the back of these cards, but compared to the fronts, that's not very interesting in my opinion. And with these elements covered, we can now focus on the more tangible parts that attach to our figures. And they include new faces for all three figures, flame effect parts for all three robots, as well as new humanoid hands for Fei Long. Let's start with the flame effect parts because they are identical in all four pieces for all three robots. And I have to say, this is one of the things that even I myself suggested after the release of Fei Long, and what we get looks really nice. This is soft plastic, hard rubber, however you want to categorize it. It's bright orange, slightly translucent, and really does look like actual flame, so that's good. This is actually two separate pieces that do swivel around each other and can also separate. And on the back of the rare one, we have connection points. This thinner rectangular-like thing is for the mouth of Fly Pro. You just push it in, though I have to say, getting it inside is not easy because you have to navigate your way around the die-cast teeth, which can be tedious. But it's possible, I will show you later on. And this round section down the flame is for the circular posts in Fei Long's flamethrower guns and that is definitely much easier to attach. You just open up the mouths, push it in all the way and it stays in place. And since Megatooth has no attachment points for these things, you just put these flames in his mouth, ask him to bite down on them like a pacifier and there they stay. Unless you start to violently shake the toy, then there's a small chance that this will fall off on its own. I really like the addition of this, though I have to say, just like the tires of Arch Enemy, these parts smell and it seems that Fans Hobby is really self-aware about this because each baggie with the flame effect part comes with scent absorber. So prepare to put these out on fresh air to maybe try to lose that odor. And I do have to admit this looks great on Fei Long. This looks like a real dragon head firing a real wild flame that's about to scorch its enemies. And I'd say this really works well for the robot mode when it's displayed on a shelf. 
Though I suppose, given that a flamethrower is usually at least a bit of a long-range weapon, I think that this should be slightly longer to better emulate that feeling, but still what we get is quite nice, even if I prefer to use just one when Fake Long is in robot mode. I have to admit, in beast mode, the flame effect parts look great on Fei Long, though light as they are, I think they still affect the stiffness of the joints, so if your heads start to lower themselves on their own, don't be surprised, it happened on my piece, it might happen on yours as well. And I think FlyPro's beast mode also benefits from the addition of this flame part, though like I said, it's also the most tricky to put in place in his case. And in Megatooth's case, this looks just fine, honestly, I think he really doesn't need the flame effect part, especially that considering the position of his head and the mouth compared to the rest of his body and the amount of stuff that's going on around his face, I think the flame just vanishes and it's very easy to miss with all these chromed bits and claws and stuff. Also, like I said, no actual connection point, so it just stays on friction and part of me is not happy with that. So overall I think the flame effects were a good idea because they do enrich the visual potential of these toys, which by the way look really really great together and I think I might find displaying them like this really plausible. So while we have them posed like that, let's perform the beast mode comparison shot. So here we have Deluxe R.I.D. Thunderhoof, Masterpiece Smokescreen, Deluxe R.I.D. Power Surge Optimus Prime, Legion R.I.D. Ratchet, Legion Reveal the Shield Optimus Prime, and Generation 2 Colossus slash Clench. They are really big. And this is just me being silly, aka what would happen if the Monster Squad encountered the German World War II bomber plane Heinkel HE-111. Alright, now let's talk about the humanoid hands that FlyPro delivered to Fei Long. and while the latter is still in beast mode, this does create some potential for creepy yet kind of funny situation where Fei Long is just finishing his dinner. And now let's look at these hands unattached for a moment. They are all black, and they are basically your standard fans hobby hand, just with a different attachment point, though there is a small modification where they now have these edges, so they can accommodate Fei Long's guns that use different type of plugging from the rest of fans hobby toys. And they also have the same possibility, so three lower fingers, single hinge, the trigger finger, separate with further joint after the first joint. And when we want to attach them, we just plug them into Fei Long's mouth cannons. So hand, cannon, connect, perhaps push this out. And now we have a nice looking handed arm. And I think that looks quite nice. Perhaps from a later perspective, these are not as necessary as I thought when I requested them before, but I think that their presence is a nice addition and a good way to add a, shall we say, option B for robot mode display if you don't want to have just two arms with dragon heads sticking at the bottom. And now Fei Long can do the heroically pointing at things pose, which I always like to have at my disposal when dealing with masterpiece-like toys. And to some people, gun wielding with actual hands instead of dragon mouths may also look much more convincing. However, I do want to point out one thing, and that is, when you attach the guns to these hands on Fei Long, you need to actually extend the dragon barrel, because otherwise this rectangular detail on the lower part of the gun will start hitting this circular detail on the front of the forearm. So as a result, the barrel will start to tip down a bit as this piece slides over the forearm. And now it's time to face the last element of this expansion pack, New facial features for all three of our robots, and I'm not sure if I'm going to like this feature all that much because 
this is not a fast swap. You actually need to unscrew the head from the neck joint, disassemble it, and then stick in the new face and then screw everything back on place. So not the fastest thing to do. I definitely prefer the method that we have with things like Masterpiece Ironhide, which just slide the old face off and slide in the new one. But I'll unpack one of these sets and do the whole thing and see how it looks like in hand. And seeing that this is part of FlyPro's review, I'm going to do the procedure on him. So we can swap out his normal neutral face to something like this, option 1. This smirking face when he knows he's in full control of the battlefield and nothing that happens can affect him. And we also get this annoyed face. And when you see that one, you want to run away as far as possible. So what we want to do is to turn it around to expose the screw hole in the back, get our screw driver and disassemble the whole thing. Okay, first question on the list. This one or this one? I think this one will work. So let's try it. Of course, I'd prefer not to have to ask that question anyway. Oh, it fits, I think. Oh, it's coming off. That's nice. Cool, cool, cool. I think we reached the limit, so now we have to split it off. Right, and we can keep this on. And let's look at this for a second. Mm -hmm. Like that. So I guess now we have to uh, push this out, I think. Oh, no, we have to push it back so that this stays in the front. And now we have to uh, push out the eyes, I think. Because the other faces do not have their own sets of eyes. I think so. Be careful not to scrap, scratch the paint on these eyes. There we go. And now we can stick the eyes into their new sockets. That looks quite nice, although you have to be careful because these eyes are not staying inside all that well. So chances are if you just touch them the slightest way, they will start to push back and they might fall off when you're not paying attention. So yes, keep attention. So we now assemble it all again. And now we can screw the head back together. And yes, this new bemused face looks well on FlyPro, so the final effect is definitely nice and in that regard I like the addition of new faces, but going there it's a bit more tricky. And seeing how that's not the most comfortable thing for me to do, I've decided to not install the faces for the other toys and just show them how they look like this. So for Feilong we again have this uh, battle cry face and this smirking face as well as this new front half of the helmet and I was wondering why did we get that for him exactly so just out of my own curiosity I unscrewed his head and then tried to swap out the face and I did not manage to do that because both the eyes and the face were sitting on quite tight so I was afraid that by pushing them with something small enough to actually fit in the holes, I would damage these parts, especially that the eyes or the visor is painted both inside and outside. So I suppose that explains why we got a new front helmet. I think it might have uh, smaller tolerance issues, so it's easier to pull everything out. And also, if you look very, very carefully, it might be just a tone or two brighter than the front. So, I suppose this is doable, but just expect it not to be as, shall we say, easy as on FlyPro. And with Megatooth we get three pieces. Two being the faces, one that is smirking and one that is shouting a battle cry, as well as a new set of eyes that is now metallic green instead of matte blue. So, I think that as a whole the Monster Squad expansion pack is a nice set that does its job rather well. The box covers and collector cards are very neat touches that don't affect the toys directly, but definitely give you more incentives to keep their packaging and proudly showcase it rather than to move it to the trash bin.
And these pieces that do directly interact with our robots are for the most part effective and do give us more ways to pose and display the monster squad. My main complaint about them being that they are not always quick and easy to apply, but if you attach or switch them around only periodically and let them be between the swaps, then it's more tolerable. And of course, the main advantage of this set is that we get it together with a toy that we need anyway if we want to complete the subgroup and its addition does not affect the toy's price tag. Now about the main toy. I like Flypro. He fits the Monster Squad a lot with this design and overall feel and I think he is just a good or even very good toy. If just like me you feared his shared engineering with Fei Long will spoil your experience, rest assured this aspect of him is quickly pushed into the background as Flypro's both modes, posability and transformation sequence do a great job of establishing their own unique and more importantly fun identity and by no means he is any lesser transforming robot toy than Fei Long or Megatooth. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of Flypro's owners would hail him as the best toy from the free. I still think Fei Long is my favourite, but I openly admit that Flypro does do some things better than the Double Dragon, and while he is not perfect and still has some minor hiccups, I do think that those people that consider getting him should go through with this plan, as at the end of the day, Flypro is a majorly solid and entertaining figure. And that's all for this video review. I will be back with the next one soon. And until then, stay well. Thank you for watching. And thank you Fans Hobby for sending me this toy.